refunds need to do. We're getting into quarter end in the next few days. What big insurance companies need to do, and what you might even see in wealth management, which is bonds being sold, stocks being bought, and that could give us a little bit more of what we have going on today, which is a welcome relief. Even if we didn't see the bottom, we do need days like this so that everyone can take a deep breath and reassess what what their、uh, portfolio looks like. Oh, well, we are actually losing steam right now. The Dow's gains cut more than in half.、Uh, everyone, stay right there if you would. We want to go to Kayla Tausche with some news out of Washington, which may be behind this fall we're seeing in the market. Kayla. Sarah, we're seeing some late-day snags in support for the stimulus bill. Last hour, we told you about three Republican senators who are、uh, pushing for some language changes in the bill because some workers would stand to earn more through these unemployment、uh, funds than they would in their、uh, median incomes in their current jobs. And now, Senator Bernie Sanders has tweeted, "Unless Republican senators drop their objections to the coronavirus legislation." I am prepared to put a hold on this bill until stronger conditions are imposed on the $500 billion of what he is calling a corporate welfare fund. That is the money that is、uh, earmarked to go to、uh, aircraft carriers or air carriers,、uh, to national security、uh, companies, and to these $550, $450 billion of eligible miscellaneous businesses that will receive this money. So he's pushing for more restrictions on that、uh, to pass. You just need、um, 60 votes if the Senate goes down a more arcane path, or a simple majority if it's more straightforward. But there is a, a gumming up of the works that could happen in the process if Senator Sanders decides to oppose this.、Um, so I, I have been texting with. Aides on Capitol Hill who say that they understand that certain changes need to be made to this legislation to win over this support, but it is seeming like it, what what seemed like a done deal earlier this morning、uh, is definitely running into some snags this afternoon. Kayla, thanks very much、uh, for that.、Uh, Mike, I'll, I'll come to you first in terms of the market reaction. Clearly, we've seen. Quite a notable amount of slippage. The Dow's only up、uh, 600 points. It had been up 1,300 points, and it just shows、uh, the fragility of any rally that we're going to get at, at this stage.、Uh, that、uh, one senator、uh, can can seemingly have this effect、uh, on the market. Well, yeah, one senator who can、uh, basically turn two trillion dollars off or on,、uh, absolutely, especially when the S and P's up 15 percent a day and a half, as it was、uh, in the middle of the day today. The other thing to keep in mind. Uh, just in, along the lines of what Josh was saying, I mean, we haven't really tested this rally at all for what we know is going to be awful data, starting with the unemployment claims tomorrow. So I think we have to just sort of watch and see how things get absorbed. Obviously, something coming out of Congress that is effective and relatively quick and of that size is a premise behind this two-day rally we've had. So obviously, that can't go away, and、uh, and us expect、uh, the market to take it easily. I mean, Steve. I brought this point up earlier. It, time is of the essence here, I, and I know this has all happened very quickly in terms of getting getting a deal through Congress. But the longer they hold up, the, the more pain there's going to be on Main Street.、Uh, it's not just about Wall Street. It's small businesses. Every day, I get in my email another nail salon or or a dry cleaner that that's closing up shop because they've already been a few weeks with revenues grinding to a halt. And this bill is supposed to address that. Talk about what we're going to see out of unemployment claims. Tomorrow and and how the economic damage is piling up here. It's going to be ugly. And and Sarah, you're right about the need to get this money out. There are people who are experiencing real pain, but there also should be some, you know, realistic expectations about what this bill can do. It can't make the economic effects of this virus go away. In fact, it's probably misnamed as a stimulus bill. It's a relief bill, and probably even at the amount of money they're talking about, it's a partial relief bill. Uh, nail salons are going to close, and and unfortunately, all the king's horses and all the king's men may not be able to reopen those nail salons again.、Um, they 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 may permanently be closed. There's an attempt here to provide a series of programs and actions here that allow incentivize work、uh, employers to keep people on the payroll.、Uh, some of them will be kept on, but there's tremendous bureaucracy that has to be established to put these loans together. There's new SBA bureaucracy that they're trying to streamline the process. There's 350 over there. There's 450 going to the Fed that could become a four and a half trillion dollar lending program. But getting that money out, writing those checks, Sarah,、uh, 
Um, people are going to be reliant upon their savings and their loved ones for a while before the relief comes. And the primary safety net is going to be the old one, which is the unemployment insurance. That's the one that's going to provide people who can't get by the best checks that are out there until the government can send this money. Yeah, well, speaking of the government sending money, airline stocks are surging today on optimism over that relief bill in Congress. Fill a boat with the details, Phil, as now we have another holdup here with Senator Sanders tweeting some opposition. Sure. Right. But we'll, most believe that the airline portion is pretty much locked in. Look, it's $50 billion, 25 in direct cash grants, another 25 in loans, though some are raising the question about whether the airlines even want to be a part of the loans, given the language that's involved. The airline bailout does restrict executive pay, dividends, and layoffs. And I want to talk about three airlines in particular right now. United just announced that it's cutting its domestic schedule by 52% i.e. the cuts continue for all the airlines. At Delta, the cuts include many employees now working three and four day weeks over the next three months. And finally, take a look at shares of Boeing, potentially on their way to their best day ever since the IPO in 1962. Remember, yesterday they said that in May they plan to resume production, at least wake up the production line for the 737 MAX. Guys, back to you. Phil, uh, for the airline CEOs, if, if bonuses are now off the table for a couple of years, what portion of their total comp does that tend to be? I mean, I know if that was applied to bank CEOs, for example, it would remove right. 75, 80 percent of their total comp. Most of their compensation is coming through performance bonuses as well as through stock performance. Now, we don't know the particular language that's attached to the government aid in terms of what is restricted when it comes to executive compensation. That's one of the fine details that everybody wants to take a look at. Philip, thanks so much for that. We have 45 seconds left of trade. Let's check in on where the markets are as we approach the close. We have lost steam, as Sarah mentioned, uh, because of some of the toing and froing in Washington. S&P's out now up less than 1%, though still up 7% this week. The Dow leads the charge still because of Boeing, which is up 24%, still holding on to a large amount of its gains. Uh, the Nasdaq, though, in the red now, down 0.6%. Senator Sanders having an impressive impact on the market. Uh, or is it just a bit of selling? and taking uh, short-term profits as we approach the close of what has been a fantastic two-day rally. Oil keeping on to 2% against, dollar staying 1% soft. As we approach the close, we have three sectors now in the red in the S&P. Industrials leads the charge up 5%. S&P 500 closing just higher than 1%, 1.1%, with the NASDAQ in the red and the Dow up 2.3%. So over to you. Oh, welcome back, everyone. If you are just joining us, I'm Sarah Eisen with Wilfred Frost and Tyler Matheson, who is at CNBC headquarters, along with Mike Santoli, CNBC senior markets commentator. Just another jerky day of trading here with the Dow and the S&P closing up, but just losing a lot of their gains in the final moments of trade there on some opposition from senators to the stimulus relief bill. There's the S&P 500 closing up only 1.13%. Just 10 minutes ago, it was up more than 4%. Uh, the NASDAQ actually closing out the day in the red, down about a little less than half a percent. The Russell 2000 index of small caps closing up more than 1%. As far and at the end of that road would have been a 1930s like depression and a 2008 like financial disruption. So, so the good news is that for now we have averted that. The less good news is we have a very tough economic and financial road ahead of us. The stimulus isn't going to be effective immediately. You need to build pipes. There will be massive layoffs. There will be bankruptcies. So we're not out of the woods, but at least we're not on the path to something really nasty. Because of that, Sarah, I think this is an up in quality opportunity rather than an all clear situation. And what do I mean by that? If you're a bond investor, look very carefully at what you hold. Reduce exposures with weak balance sheet and shadow the Fed. The Fed has established a path for you in higher quality bonds and follow that. And if you're an equity investor, really look at balance sheets because the risk of things going wrong here are quite high. Josh Brown, uh, I feel like you echoed a sen similar sentiment earlier to say the worst is, is not behind us yet. But are there some strong balance sheet uh, companies to, to Mohammed's? point that you have been comfortable enough buying in the last couple of weeks.